This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident with the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, on this Easter weekend. Welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and together we are your KTR Car Guys. Heard every Saturday from 11 to noon. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. If you've got car questions, we hope we've got answers. And we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And if you're the shy type, you can text us at 411-923, but we'd love to hear from you on the phone. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, we've got an email that's kind of interesting, something about walnuts. Uh, <laughs> what, I don't know what all that's about. Open phones and text and how to buy a used car. It's probably the most common question I get at the counter of a transmission shop. Somebody just just gave me a lot of money to fix a transmission. And they go, well, you know, what's the, what's the best kind of car? What, what should I buy? And there's so much people are uncomfortable about buying a used car. Matt, what is the process for buying a used car? Well, Dave, I mean, I, I get that question all the time, too, and it's not necessarily at the shop. It's at the party. It's at the pool, you know, at, at wherever. And there's a, we need two hours to talk about. We could really have a seminar on, on buying a, new, a used car because you start off and you said, well, what kind of used car? I don't know what kind of car is good for you. I mean, I like Hondas. I like Toyotas. I think they're great, reliable cars. Anybody can find anything wrong with any brand or model of car. So right, right off the bat, you just want to you just want to know status. You know, you want to look good. That's why I bought a Honda Element. <laughs> right, and that's why you're trying to sell it too, right? That's right. But well, but so you've got to identify what car works for you. It doesn't matter if I like a Toyota pickup or or I think somebody should you know or I think a BMW is a great car. You've got to identify what you want for you. Uh, you know, and I think I think it's budget is an is is an issue. So, are you buying a a car for your seventeen year old daughter? Are you buying a car for the family? You know, what kind of money are we looking to spend on this? And so, the process: Do you go to a dealer and just buy a used car, or do you go to a private party? You know, Craigslist. Do we go to Craigslist to buy a used car? How do we do it? Well, you know, I think either way is just fine. It depends on what you want to do. I guess the first thing, once you've, everybody has an idea. They Maybe the daughter, oh, I want a Mustang. Well, is that realistic? Is your 16-year-old daughter really going to get a Mustang? Not a good or, idea. Or can they afford one? Or, yeah, you want to, I'd love to have a BMW. Can I afford to buy the car? And then secondly, can I afford to maintain the car? So let's figure out what we want. And once we have an idea of what we want, then we probably need to start off by going to the bank. Uh. You know, go to the credit union, Arizona Central Credit Union, for example. They ha You want to go in there and you want to get pre-approved. It doesn't matter if you're going to the dealership. Yeah, the dealership has financing. They've got all that stuff in-house. So that makes it convenient. But So when you go to a private party, you've got to be ready to buy. I would still be ready to buy to go to the dealer because that's one less thing you do. So start off at your credit union and go find out how much car you can afford, get pre-approved. And now you know what you can go buy. You don't have to check with them and see if they can get you to make that what are the, payment. What are the payments going to look like on that one? And that's that's an extra little piece that kind of makes makes it hard to make a buying decision. Am I getting a good deal? Am I not getting a good deal? Because they may not they may give the car away, but they're making the money on the financing. So to have that all lined out, now you're buying it cash in hand, and then you don't have to feel like I have to be relying on you people to give me the money to buy the car that you're selling me. I think it breaks it up. It's the best way to go. The first time. I bought a car that I wasn't just like paying cash on some money I got from the side. I went to the credit union, went to Arizona Central, and I got the loan and I had a, I had a check in hand to go buy a car. And I bought it from a private party that happened to work. But I think having the money on your own before you go buy is a big deal. Yes, because oftentimes people, I've, I've bought a couple new cars. They say, well, what do you want the payment to me? I don't care. Make it whatever you want. I already, I'd already done my homework. I knew what kind of car I wanted to buy. I knew what my payment was going to be. I knew what the bank was going to loan me. But oftentimes people get caught up in this trap of what's the car payment. Forget about the payment. I mean, you do have to know that if you're financing the car, but don't get sucked into buying off payments because then you walk out of there with a seven-year loan and don't realize you just paid $22,000 for a $17,000 car, but it's still three fifty dollars a month, so you think you feel good. Feels pretty good, now, but now the car's you, wore out by the time you pay it off. Yeah, and now you've got the new car, used car purchase hangover, I, I, I guess. <laughs> so so let's get our budget. Let's find out what kind of car we want. And now we've got to go shopping. 
Well, private party or dealership? I think that people like the dealership because they feel it's a little more turnkey. They can walk in there and these guys can handle all the little drama that goes on with getting a title and making sure it's a clean title. I think you can use the bank for a lot of that, but the dealership is also not necessarily a bad fit for that. And then you can see a variety of cars if you don't really know what you want. Maybe that's a good way to go see a variety of cars versus it could get kind of time consuming on Craigslist to go around and try a 10 different types of cars when you're still trying to find out what you want. So that's that's a thing. Yeah. Now, some of the SIFs that if you are looking at a used car that you should go to is uh, Carfax is a good one. I yeah. think it's 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 a big sift. It's not going to catch everything, but run the car through Carfax, make sure it's not a Hurricane Katrina flood car. Yeah, I mean if it, yeah, it, it might let you know if it was in the river, but <laughs> you know, at the bottom <laughs> for a while checking out the catfish. But the other thing that it does is a lot of repair shops, the shop management software that we have now reports to Carfax. Mm. So you're not just – you don't want necessarily want to look at Carfax just to find everything bad that happened with the car. You might find a great maintenance history of that car on Carfax. Now, just because you don't find one, that doesn't mean that it didn't happen because not everybody reports to Carfax. Not everybody's involved with that. So, so that's a good sift for problems, and it's a good indicator maybe if they've been doing the maintenance. But I like private party, Dave. I'm I, a fan too. I Save on the go sales out. tax. It's ten percent. Yeah, there's there's sales tax. Uh, typically, you're gonna, you know, maybe you're buying the car from the first owner. We're not maybe let's let's not talk about the three to five thousand dollar car right now. Let's talk about the twenty thousand dollar car. You can probably go out and meet that person and talk to the person who's been driving that car since it was new. Maybe they have all their maintenance records where you may not get that stuff at the dealership. I'll never forget. I was looking for a Grand Cherokee when I first got married, and we're thinking about starting to have a family and everything. And I'm at the dealership, and this guy, salesman, pulls around this Grand Cherokee. It's all jacked up and big tires and everything. Yeah, a little old lady traded this thing in just last week. Come on, a little old lady was driving that car. Yeah, a little old lady traded it. He forgot what he just got out of with that with that lie. I mean, that's. Uh, <laughs> I, I get the feeling know. they'll tell you whatever they need to tell you to make it happen. But then the other thing, why people may not like the used car deal from the private party. I mean, now we got money. I got to spend twenty thousand dollars. W- am I going to walk in with a lot of cash? And as the seller, I may not want your cashier's check. So I think when you're dealing with a private party and you've got down to that point of, I think I want to buy this car, well, then it, you go to the bank and you do that the transaction bank at the bank. You don't need to walk around with all the cash. You meet the person. You have them meet you at your bank. Or first step, which we haven't talked about yet, Dave, even if you're getting at the dealer, you have the car brought to your mechanic first. Have them look at it. But I think the dealer says, oh, we already checked it out. It's great. Yeah, they they said it was great. That was so the guy says that selling it. The, the same guy that just said grandma brought in the the Jeep with the 44s on it, right? And the, <laughs> the monster mutters. Right. You know, maybe she traded in for her son that just went to prison. <laughs> well, it, it's it's hard if we talk about now on the twenty thousand dollar car. Those move a little slower, and you have a little more time to get those things. You get it, you have more time to get it to your mechanic and have it checked out. But when you're talking about the three thousand dollar or five thousand dollar car for that seventeen year old daughter. It's a little different. If you go and say, I want to have it checked out by my mechanic, they're like, man, this thing's going to be gone by 3 o'clock. We ain't got time for that. So it becomes a little harder to go that route. But I think you should always – half the cars we work on at my shop are cars that people just bought. People say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not going to fix that one. I'm going to just go get a good used car. And I'm like, we're looking at a good used car right now. Why don't we fix this one? The devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. So when you're buying a used car, you said it is that also in that budget thing you're talking about, if it's a – we're not talking about the $20,000 vehicle. We're talking about the $5,000 or $10,000 vehicle. Some money in there for the repairs they didn't do or the maintenance they didn't do, and that's why they're selling the car. Well, I can promise you that there is no used car out there for sale that just had all the maintenance done, all the repairs are current, all the service bulletins are done, and that car is in pristine and cherry condition because they did everything and now they want to sell it. Here, here's the way it goes in my shop. Just whatever you got to do just to fix it so I can sell it. So... That's what they're doing when they're getting ready to get her out of a car. So you got to be cognizant that that's happening. Now, and that's but now we're talking about the twenty thousand dollar car. Maybe it's got thirty five thousand miles on it. Well, we hear it a lot too. Oh, it's all all ready to go. They did everything. They did all the maintenance. Well, there may not be any maintenance due. You have a, th- a twenty nine thousand mile car. It's going to have a thirty thousand mile service. You got something that you're buying that's thirty six thousand miles old. It's going to have something due at at forty. 
So again, when you're making your budget, you want to make sure you're buying a car that you can afford to take care of and also afford so that you have a long, good life of ownership and experience with the car. When we come back, we've got Rick on the line and open phones at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. You can also text us at 411-923, whether you're buying a used car or thinking about buying a used car or anything about the car, give us a holler. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASE Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurt. So, who do you trust on your roof? It's way too early for Santa, and no superheroes have been spotted in the neighborhood. Let's agree right now, you shouldn't go up there. So, if the roof on your home or your business is over 10 years old, somebody ought to go up there and check for possible problems. Why not let Keiko do it for free? Why Keiko? Well, for over 20 years, Arizona has trusted Keiko Roofing with their flat, foam, tile, or shingle roofs. From a small leak to a complete new roof, Kaiko has you covered. You see, you can also trust Kaiko to use only the finest materials installed by the most skilled workers, real roofing professionals. Invite Kaiko up on your roof for a free checkup and peace of mind. Kaiko, K Y K O, 602 944 4600 or kaikoroofing.com. All your financing options will be there too. So, why do you want Kaiko on your roof? Because they're crazy about quality. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. This is Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio on this Easter weekend. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen. Sometimes we're friends, sometimes we're not. But today I think we are. And we are helping you with your car at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. A lot of talk this morning about buying a used car, but we can talk about anything you want to talk about. And up first this segment, I'm going to go with Rick. Dave, what are you doing? You're making me, you know, I'm over here. <laughs> I go to look for Rick, and there's no phone anywhere nearby. I'm, I'm not prepared again, huh? He's perpetually unprepared, and I love to put him on the spot. So can you put Rick on the line? I did already. You're not paying oh. attention. Hey, Rick, Hello? welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you today? Hi. Um, I have. I bought my wife a 2013 uh, Chrysler 200. And when she puts it in reverse, the brakes make a vibration noise. We brought it back to the dealership. We, brought, we bought it from and they said they can't do anything with it. Even the they, they said they called the engineers, uh, whoever the hell that is. Excuse me. Uh, those those are the guys that is. drive drive trains. Excuse me. <laughs> those, those guys that drive trains, engineers. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, they, they said so they have no idea what the vibration noise is, but it happened every time we put it in reverse. Real consistent. It, it seems like that would be an easy one to f- to figure out. Uh, I'm a little I'm a little confused though. We say a vibration noise, and then every time you put it in reverse, do you actually have to make it move to make yes. the noise? So okay. Yes. So you put it in reverse. You've obviously got your foot on the brake when you put it in reverse, and it still is not making any move, any noise or vibration at this point. Correct. You not start, until you start moving, and then you go to stop. So you're backing out of the driveway. Going mm-hmm. however fast that is, not Jim Rockford style, but just backing up slowly, and and you step on the brake, and at the application of the brake is when you have the noise and vibration. Yes. Okay. Now we bought the car brand new, and so they they've been had a record of this issue from day one. 
Um, just recently, we had to bring him back in because there was something wrong with the transmission. And I told him about the brakes again. Now they're telling me it's going to be a couple hundred dollars to fix it. To now, oh, so now they know what's wrong with the brakes after it's out of warranty? He, yeah, he, yeah, well, kind of, yeah. He said something about putting uh, pads, silicone pads on it or something to absorb the noise. Hmm. Does that okay. make sense? It, it does. I mean, it sounds, you know, some cars will will have a, an odd noise that they have just in reverse. I mean, my, my wife's BMW, the brakes used to squeak the first time you back out of the driveway. You, you pull out and it does it one time and it goes away. This sounds like something a little bit different than that. It's odd that now that it's out of warranty, they know what it is. I'd be tempted to tell them to, I'll, I'll give you the 200 bucks and fix it, and then maybe go have a conversation. You know, you've got this memorialized. This happened on this day, this day, this day, all throughout, and that's documented with them. And, and that might look kind of funny if you went back to the management afterwards and said, I, I, I think this is strange, and now you want to charge me for it. I suspect it may not fix the problem. I don't know if you're past the time for the lemon law, deal you know there's there, there's some specific rules about that that i can't remember off the top of my head but also if they've made an attempt to, to fix it and i mean there's so much more here is there anything really wrong with the car is it a characteristic if they went and picked five more of them off the lot would they all do the same thing and if they would then i think it's nothing to worry about then you have to look at it from an annoyance standpoint on a scale of one to ten how annoying is it i know my car when i put it in reverse in the morning and as soon as i back up and hit the brakes the first time i get a click because those pads are shifting the other direction i pulled mm -hmm. in forward last night now i'm going backwards there's always a click and it the car is not that old but it's one of those things that is it really worth chasing down or doing? Fundamentally, there's nothing wrong with the brakes. So it's it's the annoyance over cost. you got to weigh that out. Is it worth chasing down? Yeah. Or, or is it just an idiosyncrasy of the vehicle and we just got to live with it? Yeah, I mean, and how many times a day do we do it? Once? So <laughs> no. thanks so much for the call, Rick. We are going to go with John in Scottsdale. Hey, John, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Looks like you got a 1971 Opal GT. I don't know if I know anything about that. John, are you there? Uh, yeah, I'm there. I'm just, uh, just uh, waiting for my turn. How's it going? It's going Doing fantastic. So uh, I have a situation where uh, about two years ago I was driving and uh, my oil filter blew off. And I uh, pulled the car over and I, I used synthetic oil, which I think saved the bacon on that one. Um, but when I got the thing, uh, the filter back on and got the thing loaded, it seems to knock in respect to, uh, it makes a clack, 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 clack. I mean, it sounds like maybe a, a rocker or it shouldn't be laying the cat out of the bag, but it just sounds, uh, loud and knocking and for about 30 minutes and then it, it settles down. Okay. So, uh, after about 30 minutes, the knocking slowly fades away and it sounds like an old car again. What do you think that might be? So, well, you know, I I just had to pull up a picture on Google to even see what a '71 Opal GT looked like. So, in 1971, I was in my first year of diapers, and to be honest, with you, <laughs> he hasn't got out of them yet. <laughs> you know what? What might it be? Well, it, there's something wrong. <laughs> I have not got the slightest idea. I mean, something happened with the oil filter. Why that would blow off? I, a relief valve, or maybe the oil filter was plugged up. It wasn't bypassing like it should have, and it blew it off. So now, now we taxed tax the bearings. I think on the bottom end, running that thing without oil, as I think what happened. I mean, the oil filter blew off. Did you know it right away? And I, I imagine you probably knew it when clunk, 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 clunk started happening, or knock, 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 knock. And so I think there's been some damage done to the bottom end. Now, that would be my guess. I don't even know what engines in a 1971. I was born in 77. I would take a quarter out of my pocket and flip it for the answer, but I don't even have a quarter today. <laughs> so uh, I haven't got the slightest idea on that one. It, and, uh, you know, you're probably going to find, gosh, I don't know, even know who would build that. Automotive Machine of Scottsdale, the guy Dave over there at Scottsdale Road in Thomas. Uh, back in there, they might be someone good to ha drive it down there and have them have them listen to it. Whether or not they they would want to build that or, or get involved with that, I'm just not so sure. Hey, thanks for the call, John. 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTR. Matt, and I'm looking at a text here. I have an E4OD transmission, which has a tube about four and a half to f or four to five inches long that the dipstick goes into. Now, does that 
fluid have to be filled up inside that at all? I'm a little confused. Do you see that? Yeah. See, I asked because the dipstick I have, the stick part only goes in about an inch. I don't know if he's referring to a transmission fill or a power steering fill. I'm confused. I think we're both confused. We're today. totally confused. <laughs> All right, you stumped us. <laughs> we got an Opal and, an, and, and some kind of Ford. Now we're just like uh, standing here, just just completely stumped, right, Dave? I mean, totally stumped. Can we get a late model car with a question? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's worth a try, but. Generally, on an E4OD, there's going to be a long dipstick tube that goes all the way down to the transmission. I believe if I'm staring from the, the, from the grill back, it's going to be on the left side of the engine or the right side of the engine. It'll be on the left side. Passenger compartment. Passenger, Passenger side, side of the vehicle. Yeah. And uh, sometimes the, the dipstick handle is painted black, and they're actually hard to see. But it should be a nice, long dipstick uh, that comes out of that thing that goes all the way down there. So the other thing I think he might have been talking about was a power steering reservoir. Well, some of those have that long tube that, that goes up, but you don't want to be filling up into the dipstick tube on, on anything, whether it's power steering or the transmission. When we come back, we've got open lines at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Gar Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Ouch! Being out of tune is no fun and maybe even a little painful. Hi, this is Lee Weatherby, owner of Accurate Automotive in Mesa. At Accurate, we are a family-owned and operated one-stop automotive repair shop that specializes in building long-term relationships that are in tune with your needs, not ours. We've been recognized nationally as one of the top shops in the country, but for over 20 years, our priority has stayed focused on providing quality automotive service and repair at a fair price. I invite you to come in and see the difference an in-tune relationship can make for you and your car. With our free courtesy inspection, a $49 value, we feel it is well worth our investment in you because we believe good long-term relationships start early with your first walk through our doors. Accurate Automotive, home of friends serving friends, just off Broadway and Robson in Mesa since 1992. For more information, check us out online at accurateautomotiveaz.com today. Have you been told you need to spend over $4,000 on a new hybrid battery? Hi, Glenn Hayward here for the Hybrid Shop at Goodworks Auto Repair. If your hybrid has been losing fuel efficiency or become sluggish, the problem may be a battery issue. But replacing the battery with the dealer for four or $5,000 is crazy when the Hybrid Shop at Goodworks Auto Repair can condition your battery to like new for as low as $1,300. Visit goodworksautorepair.com for details. Experience what auto service should be. Fix it or forget it. This is the show that'll help you decide what to do with your car. Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are your KTR Car Guys. And today must be Vintage Day because I got a text here on a 1957 Buick Super. I see we've got a caller on the line with a 1941 Willys. We went from buying used cars to buying really, really, really used yeah. cars. <laughs> and then we got somebody that knows something about an Opal on the line, yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> We got a mixed bag today, Dave. It's it's going to be a fun rest of the show, huh? Well, it's it, it is Easter weekend, so hopefully everyone's got family in town and they're looking forward to getting together. I don't know Easter weekend Easter egg hunts. I I don't know. Do you remember Easter egg hunts? Mm-hmm. You find an Easter egg about two months later, and it smells bad. <laughs> you know, we got some deals today where they're eggs, but they're made of real eggs, but there's nothing in them. You just they got them at Walmart. I don't know, made yeah. from real eggs. So maybe they, maybe they already sucked all the egg whites. <laughs> that just sounds I don't, I don't that know. sounds wrong. I think you know I don't know how what Jesus and eggs had to do with each other, but that sounds really wrong to have a fake egg on Easter. I know. Well, <laughs> at least it won't stink. Well, up right? first this segment, we are going to go with Brandon in Mesa. He's got a 1999 Honda Accord. How can we help you, Brandon? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, I got an issue with my car. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've had it for the last 215,000 miles, but it's got 285 on it. And uh, occasionally as I'm driving, it'll just turn off. And, you know, it's nothing to panic about. You flip it in neutral, you turn it back on, you keep driving. <laughs> so you're uh, rolling down the road and it turns off. 
Yeah. How many times uh, in a week would that happen? In a week, maybe three. Okay. Uh, the other indicator that I've got is that occasionally when you go to start it, it will take, and this is only occasionally, maybe once a week, it takes two or three times. It'll start up, die, start up, die, and then start up and keep going. Uh, there's no chugging of the engine. It's just suddenly off, just like you turn the key back. Brandon, that car is fuel injected? I'm going to assume so, yeah. Yes. Okay. It I sounds like I, it needs an exorcist. It doesn't sound like a normal <laughs> car problem that a mechanic can help with. Well, yeah, maybe. maybe. Uh, 99 Accord, I, I can hear all the Honda specialists out there. They know exactly what it is. I mean, I'm going to take two wild guesses, and they're probably both pretty accurate. You're going to have a bad PGMFI relay, which Honda calls that program fuel injection. There's a relay that goes bad on those a lot. They have bad solder connections. If my memory is right, it's down in the right-hand side uh, foot well on, the, on the, the right side kick panel. Uh, you could have a bad igniter, but I think Honda was past those bad igniter issues in 99, and I don't think it would have made 285,000 miles had it had the original igniter. There used to be, you'd look at them, and uh, you know, if it was brown, it was no good. The black one was the updated one, or vice versa. Th that ship has sailed on all those. So I'm going to guess. If you're going to just guess for a part because this thing is so hard to duplicate, and that's the big challenge that we would have in the shop too is we've got to get this thing to act up, and that's going to be nearly impossible to do. Intermittent and issues. I mean, three times a week isn't very often. That means you've got to leave your car with the me mechanic for a week. Yeah, because we've got to get it to act up once, and hopefully we've got equipment hooked up to it. But the way it goes, Murphy Law always kicks in full-time, overtime, at the shop, we'll get it to act up, and then we'll go to test it, and we'll go start it again, and it'll start right up. So, But if I'm guessing, and I want to spend less than 100 bucks, I'm going to go throw that PGMFI relay in there, keep my fingers crossed, and, and that's the deal. Well, thanks so much for the call, Brandon. We are going to go with Lori in Queen Creek on a 2005 Dodge Caravan. Lori, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. What can we do for you? Well, I have uh, my caravan. It wine the whole time I drive it. Nothing but wine. Sounds like my kids. They're whining all the time in the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can. You got a couple of options here. We can turn the radio up, which helps with a lot of noises, you know. And then, but can you affect the noise at all when you turn the steering wheel to the left or the right? Does the noise, does the whine become more loud or quieter? A little bit more loud. I'm thinking it's a transmission. Okay, so do you have to be moving to make the wine, or if yeah? You, okay, so so there has the car has to be in motion. It won't do it just sitting still at the stoplight, right? Well, it once you start, it just keeps going. And it doesn't matter. Okay, you can well, drive, you could be at a stoplight. It just winds. If I was looking at it, I would like to know if the wine was consistent with the speed of the wheels or the speed of the engine. So if, it, if it's consistent with the speed of the wheels, well, now I'm starting to look at things like wheel bearings. You know, it gets louder with speed or changes with speed. If it's consistent with the speed of the engine, i got to think about what things are turning on the engine. And that could be things like a water pump. It could be things like power steering. That's why I was asking if it changes when you turn the wheel because I'm starting to think of that power steering direction. Mm -hmm. Now, the transmission, if the, the pump itself is whining a little bit, that would be turning. Anytime the engine is running, the transmission pump is, you know. So those are the things that I'm looking at, but that's, that's what I'm going to feel on a road test. Is it consistent with engine speed? So that's the RPM. So if I rev the engine up, does the noise change? And then, or is it consistent, you know, if I'm going 30 miles per hour, it sounds like this. If I'm going 50 miles per hour, it sounds like that. That's going to help me differentiate which path I want to go down. Well, now let's take that a little step further, Dave, if we're in the shop. So let's just, she did say that once you start it and start going, it always makes it. Doesn't matter if you're stopped. Doesn't matter if you're sitting still at the stoplight, cruising down the road, it's always whining. So in my shop, we're, we're going to determine that. We're going to figure that out. We're going to go verify that on the test drive, and, and, and we're going to know exactly what, what you know and verify what you've told us. We're going to listen for other noises and things as well because it's not always the obvious. When I get back to the shop, if we've determined it's coming from – it's rotating on something with the engine, the next step I'm taking, we're going to get a stethoscope, and we're going to try and find it as a front – or the rear. If it's towards the rear of the engine, we're leaning more towards transmission. Or maybe we're just going to take the belt off. We're going to start eliminating things that rotate. By removing the belt, 
and then start the engine with the belt running. Now the only thing rotating is the internal of the engine or the transmission. transmission. Yeah, pulling the belt is a big tool we have just to see what, what, what's rotating. We take the belt away, and that takes all those components away. The power steering is no longer moving. The idler pulley, idler pulleys make a nice little noise mm-hmm. that uh, sounds like maybe what you described. So there's some different things there. The one thing, when you do go to the shop and you have a noise or a vibration, those two things, in my shop, we always make the customer go show us so we can hear it, so we don't fix the wrong thing. Because we'll fix something on their car, and they say, oh, that noise has been there since day one. I didn't care about that. I was talking about this one over here. Well, guess what? It's not there anymore. We <laughs> it's fixed it. It's not there anymore, right? <laughs> so it's always worthwhile. If you want to if you want to minimize your time at the auto shop, say, hey, I got this noise on my car. Can I show it to you? And I want to drop it off so you can get it figured out for me. And have them get in your car. There's nothing worse than a guy calls you up. He has not even seen your car. You know, hey, I'm calling about your car, and technicians looked at it. You need this, this, and this, and it's going to be $1,000. And you get the feeling, have you even looked at my car? <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, get the, I think most of our shops, the service advisor or the technician will pair up, and, and they will get you. And like you said, Dave, it's important that we all are on the same page and we're hearing that same noise because we have to drive the car the way you drive it, too. I don't know how many times I've gotten the car. And I drive it one way, and I can't get the noise to happen. But then I jump in the car with little lady who drives a little bit more aggressive than I thought she did. She's from stand- Pasadena, yeah. yeah you and bet. she stands on the gas. So we have to know how you're driving the car so that we can also get it to make the noise and, and, and duplicate those conditions. Well, I got a text here from someone that says, on the 99 Accord, Matt is dead wrong. <laughs> it's an ignition switch. He's 95% sure. So I'm writing down his number. And then we're going to put a wager, and I'm going to call him if, he, if he's wrong. We so for the that. last caller, I think you should ga- gamble on an ignition switch, and I'll give you this guy's phone number in case it doesn't work out. But he and sounds see, pretty positive and, from his, the way he wrote that text. See, he's but you're sure. also a fool of it, Dave, because it doesn't say Matt's 100% wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I, I put that in there. <laughs> you just like to try and throw me under the bus whenever you can. <laughs> a little theater of the mind For there. sure. Wow. Well, I got another one here. I have a 2007 Suburban. I read that as Subaru there for a second. Sometimes I start it in the morning, and it it uh, ticks for about 30 seconds to a minute. So that's an initial fired it up, making some noise, kind of goes away. What do you think about that, Moen, Matt? Uh, I don't know. What do you think, Dave? <laughs> I think you should turn the radio up. That's my fix for everything today. But it's not uncommon. I do I do see that, these vehicles. When you start them up in the morning, it takes a little while to get to get the oil going. When you get a, He didn't say how many miles are on it, but you got some miles on it. There's some more engine wear and Little ticking, is it like a ticking like there's something mechanically wrong or should I just not worry about it? Lifter ticking down, uh, could have a bad oil filter, it's not maintaining some, some the the check valve, it's not keeping oil in the filter. Um, I think that cold start r- thing on those things oil. is not- yeah, and that's, a, that's another good point is a lot of people, they think, hey, you know, should I, the car says I should put 520 in there. Should I do some 1030? Because my grandpappy always told me 1030 was the thing to do. But whatever the manufacturer asked for, that's what you need to put in the car. Don't do any backyard engineering. Just go with it. They went through R&D. They know what they're doing. They're guaranteeing these motors for 100,000 miles, so they don't want to have you putting in different oil. They've, they've done the math. You're smiling at me like. <laughs> you said backyard engineer. I said, so they're driving trains in the backyard. That's true. That's <laughs> true. I do have a train set. So anyway, well, we do have an email this week, and it has something to do with walnuts and fixing cars. Uh, I'm just, uh, it's, I know it was April Fool's this week, so I'm wondering if it has something to do with April Fool's. But this guy says he can get his car fixed. He's got an Audi? Well, yeah, Dave, I, I know you thought it. Dave, Dave calls me on April Fool's Day. We got some jokester on email talking about walnuts. We're getting set up. No, Dave, <laughs> it, it happens. And I first heard of this in the 80s with BMW. But cars, you hear us talk about carbon problems, gasoline direct injection or injection in fuel injector cleaning and direct injection. And these cars get carbon buildups. You hear about us talking about cleaning your fuel injectors and such. Well, they used a thing called car or walnut blasting to remove carbon from the engine. And basically, instead of using a sand blaster, which that sand, if it got into the engine, would, no, just, would just destroy, would just destroy, like Dave says, just wreck it, just would wreck your engine. So the walnut shells can actually be ingested into the engine and they don't hurt anything. So what they do, whether it's a Volkswagen has the problems with inject, direct injection, carbon buildup, Mercedes, BMW, anything 
any engine that has gasoline direct injection has a propensity to have this, this buildup problem. So what you do is you remove the intake manifold and they use crushed up walnut shells and they force them into the, the intake manifold area or onto the valves with compressed air, just like a sandblaster, and they're blasting away and picking at and removing all the carbon buildup. So that is an absolutely awesome. normal repair. But I think the repair that we do is better. The whole object here is that you want to remove the carbon buildup from the engine and from the valves. But the problem with the carbon or the uh, walnut blasting is that's the only place that it removes the carbon from. And then the experience that I've had in my shop with the Audis and Volkswagens and BMWs that we've done with the upper engine decarbon or using the BG products to remove the carbon buildup is oftentimes the valves, Not it's not just the valves, but it's the rings, the compression ring that is carboned up. So we use a chemical that melts all that junk away and we still have to pick at it and it's this gooey mess. But the other thing that we found, because we're putting that chemical into the engine itself and into the combustion chamber, we're getting increases in getting the compression back to where it was. We've done tests on cars that have had the walnut blasting done, and they still don't run right. And we do a compression test and find, especially on the Volkswagen and Audis where the crankcase ventilation goes in, we find that the compression is very low on those engines because the walnut blasting doesn't clean that. So you need to get the whole system clean, the the rat, the rings, the valves, the intake manifold. It's going to require an oil change at the same time. You typically want to change the spark plug. So walnut blasting is just the beginning of it, and there are some other methods out there. Well, I thought that guy was getting getting hosed at his auto repair shop. You know, I hate to be the guy that's got to eat all those walnuts. Ha- give your car 100 walnuts and call me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, we've got Glenn, Glenn, and John, and maybe time for one more at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Have you been told you need to spend over $4,000 on a new hybrid battery? Hi, Glenn Hayward here for the hybrid shop at Goodworks Auto Repair. If your hybrid has been losing fuel efficiency or become sluggish, the problem may be a battery issue. But replacing the battery with the dealer for four or $5,000 is crazy when the hybrid shop at Goodworks Auto Repair can condition your battery to like new for as low as $1,300. Visit goodworksautorepair.com for details. Experience what auto service should be. (laughs) It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Fix it or forget it. This is the show that'll help you decide what to do with your car. Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are helping you with your car every Saturday from 11 to noon. And I'm looking at the text again, and Matt, it looks like we got another one wrong. <laughs> well, They said Matt was 110% wrong on this one. <laughs> It's the oil pump O-ring pickup common on GM trucks and SUVs, and it's like, it's right there. It's right there. You know. You should have known that. You were the one that didn't know, Dave. Know. You know? That's because I'm a tranny guy. I yeah. fix transmissions. Are, so are you still? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we're not going there with what you are. Uh, so, yeah, in the fog that we have in this studio today, going back to that text message with the, with the GM, the Suburban that, that rattles for a little bit in the morning, it is right. There, we we the way you diagnose that, at least the way I, I've seen the guys in my shop do it, is there is an oil pump pickup tube O ring, 
where the tube goes down into the bottom of the oil to pick up or in the bottom of the pan to pick up the oil. Well, that O-ring hardens up and there it's not it's not uh, fully submerged in oil there, so it allows it to suck air. And you can't compress the air and you have low oil pressure on on startup. So what the way to diagnose that is, and I'm not sure which direction. You have to look at a schematic and find out which side of the engine that that uh, that the pickup tube is on. And we just jack the car up really high to get all the oil tipped to one side, so that the O-ring is submerged in oil. And if it doesn't tick under that startup condition, then that's probably what it is. And then in that vintage of suburban Tahoe. Sierra, whatever that Chevy truck with that V8, they did have some oil consumption problems on those. And some of the fixes inside the oil pan were to put some different baffles and there's some plastic shields and such you can put in there. That would be a good time to do that. If you're going to pull that oil pan down, replace that O-ring, do those other baffles too. They may have already been done because if it was a, a service bolt and deal It's a good those. thing we got these people on text helping you out. Because, I know, keep uh, us alert, huh? Because we are... <laughs> I don't think I got enough sleep last night. <laughs> Probably not. Well, we're going to go with a patient, Glenn in Peoria. He's got a 1941 Willys. Hey, Glenn, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you? Well, here's the deal. Uh, while I had my body off and getting it prepped uh, for painting, I decided I was going to work on the engine, put new, uh, just just kind of make it look nice. And at the same time, I decided I was going to adjust the valves both intake and exhaust. Now, before I did that, my compression was uh, solidly 120 on all four cylinders, and the engine ran fine. The engine still runs fine, but this morning I decided that I was going to run a compression check, and I'm at about 110. And I'm wondering if I just screwed up the uh, the valve, uh, you know, adjusting the valves, and I should probably let a professional do that uh, Instead, I mean, does, will a poorly adjusted intake or exhaust valve affect the compression? Oh yeah, it's it, it, it. Yeah, you could definitely lower the compression by having the valves too tight. And okay. and yeah, I mean, if if they're too tight, you can definitely cause some future mechanical failures. The seats are going to get beat up, or the valve stem. I mean, they're they're. It, it's not going to be good for it. So that should definitely be readjusted. Okay. I mean, if you're comfortable with it, just do it again. Just take, well, your, take you know, your time. And... Just... <laughs> now I'm a little scared. I should right? probably, you know, a garage, especially if, if if I, you know, if I trailer it to a, a garage with the valve cover off and the and the side panel off on the engine. Uh, you know, how long can it take? So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, how long can it take? It can take a long time because nobody's working on 1941 Willys every day. So it, what sounds simple on the surface might take somebody all day. So I wouldn't go in there thinking, geez, it's going to be quick, so therefore it should be cheap either or inexpensive. And and quite honestly, I don't know if that showed up in my parking lot partially taken apart. I'm just going to just kind of give you keep giving you directions on where to keep going to. Uh, might be a little difficult. You're going to have to find the right shop, specialty to work, to, shop, yeah, and, to work on that. It's not just going to be your run-of-the-mill shop and just pop on in there and, and have them do it. Uh, I would, and I would encourage you to, before you show up somewhere, to talk to them and also find out what condition they want it in because they may return it back to you and say, "Now you go put it back together. The valves are adjusted, and and, and you can be responsible from this point out." So that's going to be a little tricky for sure. Just that the way it's going to have to go down to get done. Well, thanks so much for the call, Glenn. We've got another Glenn in Scottsdale on a Chevy S10. Hey, Glenn, you're on Bumper to Bumper. How can we help you? Uh, thanks for taking my call. Hey, I'm going to be doing front brakes. I'm squealing. Uh, I think the um, the little metal sensor is rubbing against it and if the uh rotors are in good shape how often can you just re uh change out just the brake pad um is that a common enough thing or um should i plan on doing rotors i know if, if they feel good and um they don't seem to be grooved or anything is this two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? Two-wheel drive. Two-wheel drive. So that means it's got bearings that need to be repacked if you pop the if you pop the rotors off. 
the you know the rotors you don't go by a feel or how they look it's a measurement you're going to measure there's a minimum thickness and that's stamped on that brake rotor you've got to measure that beforehand and then depending on how much you're taking off or who's machining the rotors for you they're going to know whether or not you're going to leave enough of material there can you check that with your thumbometer you're, yeah, you pinch it between your thumb and your forefinger. <laughs> Go, yeah, no. it feels like no. it feels like an inch and a quarter. No. And, and then the the other part of the question was how can how often or how how frequently how many times can you just replace the pads without machining the rotors? And I never do a brake job in our shop without machining the rotors. I know of some other shops that they don't machine rotors on anything. They just put brake pads in and clean up the calipers and lube the slides and do all that stuff, but they really don't surface the rotors at all. And then I know other shops that don't even own a brake lathe. They just they replace put, the rotors. They put rotors on every single time. Now, a couple so, weeks ago, we had a show on brakes, and we did talk about rotors. Let's say you're not going to, you're just going to replace these rotors. There's different rotors that you can buy. You can buy the $10 rotor. You can buy the $30 rotor. And and there is differences in the way they're made and the way they're poured. And so you get what you pay for when it comes to buying those brake parts in many cases. You can buy a $10 pad, and I'm just using numbers for the sake of numbers, or you can buy a $40 pad, but what do you want out of it? And the, pri- and the difference isn't just $30. There is a there is a quality difference. So, again, where are you in the life cycle of the vehicle? Uh, what's your budget look like? Do you just need to get through the next two months, and then you can have the the way to do it right? Or or maybe maybe Glenn wants to go for it. Maybe Glenn, this is his his great car, and he you know he's going to work on that. So Glenn, when you do, jack it up. Be safe. Have jack stands. Don't get underneath anything ever without without having a set of jack stands. Uh, if you have another car, that's you want to take it apart. Go take maybe take an old rotor with you. Have them measured. I think the part stores. I know Napa will machine rotors for you. That's um, a, that's a huge huge point because I know we got a lot of people that work on their own cars, but put some floor jacks under the car because you've got it. If you've got a nice you know roll around jack, that's fine. But those things all of a sudden give out for whatever reason. I don't know, but you should plan on that car it could fall at any time. And it never fails that you read about somebody who died working on their car in their driveway. It's a life or death situation. Yeah. Hey, David, I just want to take a minute to thank everybody who came out to the Virginia Auto Service open house last weekend. It was a great success. Enjoyed seeing some of the listeners out there. And, and uh, so thanks to all who came out. Hey, we'll see you next week for Bumper to Bumper Radio. Ever wonder how the people that built those old castles kept the rain out? I don't think they did. But let's face it, your home is your castle, and you can protect it because you have Keiko roofing on your side and on your roof. But don't wait for an emergency. Those other castles have been around for hundreds of years. If your roof is more than 10 years old, you really should have the trusted professionals at Keiko give you a free roof checkup today. Flat, foam, tile, or shingles, Keiko handles them all. From a small leak to a complete new roof, Keiko has you covered. And when you invite Keiko up on your roof for that free checkup, if you don't need anything done, they'll tell you. That's the kind of trust that results in half of Keiko's business coming from referrals or repeat customers. Call 602-944-4600 or check keikoroofing.com for all the rest, including financing options. Keiko Roofing, they're crazy about quality. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our AS Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurtz Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Round up the kids and grab your clubs. Family Sunday Fun Day is back at Wigwam Golf. That's right. Every Sunday after 3 p.m., kids can play one round for free with the purchase of an adult round at only $25. The entire family can enjoy a game without the worry of pace of play.